Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Oklahoma's wheat and canola are maturing about two weeks earlier than normal. Also arriving ahead of schedule, insects and disease. We begin with canola. Here's SUNUP's Dave Deacon. All those little broadleaf plants that we saw back in early winter have now turned into large golden canola plants and we have Josh Bouchong here to tell us how the uh, golden canola plants are looking across Oklahoma. Well, uh, surprisingly looking a lot better than last year. Obviously moisture does make a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, overall we have some great stands across the state. Some marginal stands but with these last rains they're able to catch up quite a bit. We got a bunch of great looking fields across the state. How, how are we in comparison to uh, last year as far as timeline goes? As far as timeline goes, uh, the canola is a lot like wheat this year. It's quite a bit ahead of time. Uh, it's about 10 to 14 days earlier than it should be. Uh, hopefully with this big rain we just got, uh, we'll just have a longer filling period on the pods or maybe more pod layer. We'll hopefully contribute to yield, but I'm probably predicting that we'll have an earlier harvest than usual, so. Okay, well, and one thing that we have to talk about before we get to harvest, are, are some uh, insects that are showing up in the fields. Yes, obviously, uh, you can't count your crop until it goes across the scale. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do need to continue to scout across our fields. Uh, one of our major insect issues from here all to harvest is uh, cabbage aphids and green peach aphids. And you can see here, this plant is severely infested. Uh, obviously, if you had a large part of your field looking like this, obviously you're gonna need a spray but oftentimes they're kind of in what we usually say hot spots, just kind of here and there. So you gotta have to kind of look throughout your field if you can get across your field and try to make a judgment what best represents your field on one display. Like I said, obviously it's just kind of a small area that kind of grows over time, but they do uh, draw down on the plant quite a bit and restrict its growth and pod development. And as you can see here, we don't really have too much pods developing like we should say as in this pod or this racine. Planted acre numbers are up this year. Yes they are. Uh, we did have a large increase again this year. As with the last three years we've been on pretty good incline on increasing acres. Uh, they're saying in the southern Great Plains uh, roughly 200,000 acres this year so hopefully we'll get most of that to harvest and have a good yield. So it's looking pretty promising right now. Excellent. What, what are some of the things that uh, canola producers need to be thinking about right now as far as harvest goes? Uh, obviously, like we said, keep scouting your fields, mm -hmm. but as we do near closer to harvest, we do need to get a couple plans set up in place. Obviously, a uh, perfect world, we go and direct cut it just like our wheat. Mm -hmm. But in Oklahoma, we do have a bunch of storm conditions come harvest. So one of the best ways to manage our risk is to prep the crop for harvest, either using a swather or a pusher, or even using a desiccant to dry down that crop so we can get a timely harvest. It all goes down to time management. Obviously, if your farm only has 20 acres, you can probably harvest it in a timely fashion where you can usually get away with direct harvest. But if you are a larger operation, say a couple hundred or a couple thousand acres, obviously you need to spread your risk out and give you a longer window to harvest. And obviously pushing or swathing give you a little bit more time to start harvesting. It's a little bit more safer in the windrow than standing. As you can tell, standing the, plot, or the crop kind of waves in the wind we all like to see that wheat crop waving around, but you see ripe canola waving around, you usually hear it hitting the ground too. So start making some contacts if you're wanting to maybe use a swather or a pusher, make some contacts or a custom harvester. Make sure if you do have a swath, if you have someone to pick it up, make sure they have arrangements to pick up or bring down a pickup header. Uh, you might make a couple different contacts. Obviously harvest time is always hectic. Have a plan B or even a plan C sometimes is very beneficial. Well, and speaking of time, you're going to be uh, you're going to be spending a lot of windshield time across the state coming up here in a couple weeks. Yes, I am. Uh, OSU is putting out their second year of canola field tours. Mm -hmm. It's going to be April 9th through the 12th uh, across 13 locations across the state. Need to go uh, talk to their local county educator and get more information on that as to when and where those are going to be. Uh, we'll spend about an hour and a half at each location. Have four to five speakers talk about canola production. As well as we're going to have our third annual canola field tour in Lahoma Station. Uh, pretty much most of the most of the day event start with early morning, about 8:30, and go to a lunch. Uh, we'll have quite a few things to show there. 
as far as some plots and research and some other stuff we've seen over the last few years. So. Okay, thank you much, Josh. And you can find a link to that on our website, sunup.okstate.edu.